in Christchurch, we're doing everything we possibly can to rebuild the city in a way that, that people want to actually invest and live here. And uh, central government is putting its, all, all of its resources into it, and they are quite substantial resources. Local government is putting huge resources into it, and what we're looking for now is the private sector to put its resources into it, and that way we'll deliver the vision that the people of Christchurch have said they wanted through the central city plan. I think it's a really bold document, and I think it really sets us up, sets the framework of investment up from government and local government. It shows that we are absolutely committed to what is going to be an incredible city. Uh, I think that the opportunity now for the private investment market to come in and sit alongside world-class facilities in the centre of what is going to be an absolutely stunning, safe, modern, low-rise city for people at the heart of the South Island is an extraordinary opportunity. I'm, I'm really excited to be part of it. I think we're all excited to see uh, what that private development is going to bring here in terms of the quality, the sustainability and the belief in the very positive future that this place has. We think the, the Christchurch uh, opportunity is, is unique in, in, in the world and at this time uh, and it comes at a time when, when, when much of the activity around the rest of the world is, is slowing down. We've got this chance to position this, this city as, as the capital city of the South Island of New Zealand to service you know, the rural hinterland of New Zealand, a really productive base. Uh, so that gives us this opportunity to really secure a 100-year view, to get the city uh, positioned for that competitive advantage, to get the talent, to get the skill sets, to attract the new investment that will make this place a, a, you know, a vital part of Asia-Pacific. There's going to be a, a $30 billion spend in Christchurch. That, that's a mix of, of private, public, and insurance money, um, and so it will very much be the place to be. There's no other place spending this sort of money in the Western world at the moment, and, uh, and we think Christchurch is the place to spend that money. It's going to happen, so people need to get on, on board and involved in it if they want to be a part of that investment proposition. When the Blueprint team came to us, um, they were scared that we would say to them that there were things that they couldn't do because of the cost. Uh, that wasn't really the challenge that we put to them. Um, we needed to have a city that was globally relevant in terms of a new urban design. Uh, we needed to have a city that could drive increased participation from individuals wanting to be here, either as employees, uh, households, so the residential piece was important to us, uh, business owners, uh, developers and investors. So there was quite a broad range of people that we needed to touch from an investment point of view. Footfalls are a very you know, important thing. It's about the space, it's about the atmosphere and it's about the participation at all levels. So uh, we've got uh, habits, people who still engage with the central city, we've got to enga en engage with that and encourage that and, and amplify it. Uh, and, and People are ready for that. It's, there's, there's been a, a long time without the amenities that a city of this size and, and a region of this nature really needs as the second city in the country. Um, so there's a real enthusiasm and pent-up demand for that too. But we acknowledge that there are going to be winners and losers with the plan and that's uh, you're never going to be able to satisfy everybody. It's part of the democratic process that people always have an issue. However, an overview, I think that uh, people will acknowledge that the plan is, is just one out of the box and it will be just the right thing to do for Christchurch and there will have to be some personal sacrifices made but those benefits will certainly outweigh the negatives. The money's flowing now but what we're, we're doing is looking to focus it and to amplify it and to get the, the, the most leverage out of it in, in the sense of the outcomes that, uh, for both the investors and for the people who participate in the city and the region and the the million people in the South Island that it serves. So um, we'll be having a process of engagement. We're still in a competition for ideas phase. We're looking for people to, to see, you know, to engage their enthusiasm and the vision around here, but there'll be processes and procurement processes following, looking for all sorts of participation in, in both the public investment and the private investment. Very keen to look at catalyzing private, the key private investment as well, just to really work through in an open book way what are, what of any barriers there, there are remaining that may need to be closed in order to manage the time uh, that that it will take to get over the five years to a real compelling and uh, 
environment for people to live, work and play in. Part of the new rules for the central city is that it's very streamlined from a regulatory point of view. In fact, the only if you build a building that, that fits with the criteria, the only thing you actually have to get regulatory consent around is actually the building of it itself, so a building consent in New Zealand terms, and uh, you have to go through a five-day process to ensure that the, the urban um, amenity of the building, the urban design, meets an appropriate standard, which actually secures your investment, protects your investment from, from bad buildings being around you, so it provides that future city view to, to those buildings. So five-day turnaround on those, um, so very, very smooth regulatory environment in the central city. But easy doesn't mean that it's compromised. We're still going to be achieving and aiming at setting the bar very high and uh, ensuring that we do get the, the best uh, possible urban design outcomes that we possibly can. Christchurch is, is we look at successful mid-sized mid cities around the world and Christchurch has, has the criteria for that. And yeah. out, of, out of the tragedies and, and, and the disaster that's been here, we, we can identify the, the core strengths that still underpin this economy. It's, it's, it's the food basket of Asia. It's got the amenities and the natural amenities that will attract people here anyway, or it has done. Uh, and we've got an opportunity to set it up with a 100-year view as to how to really achieve a city that's going to attract and retain people and have a competitive advantage around the world. Before this opportunity, we had three great cities in New Zealand. Auckland's done a lot in terms of its waterfront and developing. So is Wellington. Christchurch has an opportunity to be even better. And we believe as a group that what we're, what we're developing here is going to be New Zealand's, if not the world's, premier city.